And I'm like, oh my gosh. So I hope they have protection on them and you have yourself spraying with I have a lot of protection on me. And unfortunately, um, you know, I hear from people all the time. We're going to get into the discussion about Lyme disease in just a minute. But I want to talk about, you know, protection. I have been told by so many people not to use products like Deep Woods Off that have DEET Right. Around on my own skin because I typically wear boots and socks, even with shorts and a T-shirt, which looks really dorky, but I'm going to protect myself as much as I can. But I spray deep woods off around on my boots and my socks, and it seems to keep the little critters from, you know, climbing in. The researchers are saying that DEET doesn't work for ticks. It works really? for mosquitoes, but they've changed so much over the years that wow. it's just not effective. That's amazing. Um, we use permethrin on our clothes, and then there's natural sprays like Beat It or Tixanol. Peppermint was, oil yeah. works, too. Oh, natural somebody stuff. told me about killing a tick with peppermint oil. Yeah. You I can't see. do that. Yeah. You can't? <laughs> no. It regurgitates. Like if it's if, in you, yeah. it, it will regurgitate its stomach contents. Oh, that's lovely. See, see this you is exactly... You make a tick throw up? Is that what exactly, you're saying? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> the only thing you're supposed to use is tweezers to pull it out. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, I, so let's, let's stay on the topic of the protection for just a minute. When you put your dogs on front line, let's just say front line, what do you do for yourself? What is similar to front line that you can actually utilize on a monthly on basis a person. maybe on a person yeah because <laughs> i mean there's nothing that you can take on a regular basis that's going to make you immune to to ticks being able to get you no the only thing we use is permethrin on our clothes because it's good through five or six washings so you can consider that a monthly thing that you can do what is that it's like and where Sawyer, do you get it's it? like Sawyer's and you have to go in the Walmart camping section. And it's called Promethrin. Mm-hmm. It's Sawyer's Promethrin. Sawyer's right? Promethrin. Yeah, it's in a like a yellow box. Okay. And that has been the best thing. Even the military uses it on their uniforms, yeah. That's very interesting. So and you can also have your clothes, you send it off to a place that will actually treat your clothes and it's good for a year. Interesting. Even through washing. So in the last about a year, and I got those clothes for my husband because we're on 18 acres, and so he's always mowing all the time, and I got it for my son. And so they wear these T-shirts and socks that, that the ticks don't even crawl up on them. So. Okay, so I want to know, if you will, please, uh, tell me about your, your history and your expert knowledge of ticks because the Lyme disease aspect of your life is prevalent, and you said yeah. that everybody in your family has Lyme disease, yeah. which is pretty scary to think about because I know several people who've died from it. Really? Yeah, and actually. That, see, and people don't realize that. They don't realize that you can die from this. Well, I'm from the Pacific Northwest, so there's a whole different oh, yeah. slew of ticks out there. But it's here, too, just as bad, and, and people just don't realize it. Right. Um, to say when our story began, it, it's hard to say because my husband was the first one to show symptoms, but we had no idea. What were the symptoms? He, he would come home from work. He he started off to work, and all of a sudden he turned around and he came in the door. And I said, "What's wrong?" He says, "I feel like I'm coming down with the flu." I said, hmm. "Your stomach hurt?" No. Um. Are you? Are, do you have a sinus infection? Are you? You know? Are you congested? No. <laughs> So, uh, you know, I thought he was turning into a hypochondriac because this kept going on every month. Hmm. And it cycles like that, especially around a full moon. Um, the it, the spirochetes are known to cycle every month, and they actually have babies. And that's when you'll get the most sickest is when those, yeah. when Ew, they have, they're, just, yeah. they're attached to you well, and they're having babies? Yes. Ew. They, have, they have hatchlings. So, and that's when people feel their worst. So, he yeah. was doing this for a while. I can imagine it yeah. would make you feel bad. And he kept getting... Sounds like something out of Alien. Yes. yes. The little that's crit- exactly critters are replicating ex- in your arm. That's exactly what I think of when you think of this. I mean, they need to make a movie out of it. I mean, Steven yeah. Spielberg would uh, make a bunch of money. So gross. <laughs> <laughs> so gross. Okay, so... Just from the beginning. Go ahead. Your then, husband has been very sick. And, and then, um, so he, he got over it, um, but he was tired all the time. And in 2001, it started again. And he seemed, to me, he seemed lazy. I mean, that's a terrible thing to say, but that's typical of, mm-hmm. of yeah. relatives and friends to think that, that they're lazy or, some, you know, something's going on. 
So then I saw him coming up the st- our stairs. He was down in the basement, and he had to hang on to the wall. Oh, my he gosh. He could that's not terrible. catch his breath. He could not get out what he wanted to say. And he already had been to the doctor twice. I said, I'm taking you to the doctor because, you know, the mama bear comes out. Mm-hmm. So I took him to the doctor, and the doctor said, you want him in the hospital? I said, yes. So they put him in the hospital. But what they told us was that they found bacteria in his bloodstream. That's all we were told. Oh we my. were never told to stay out of the woods. We Gosh. were never told to stay away from ticks. So he was only in there three days. Well, if you have chronic Lyme, that's not long enough. So he got out. He felt better, but he was still tired. And so he slowly has been going down all this time. Well, then my son, fast forward to 2011, he started having the same symptoms. Your son did. Our son and did. is your son out mowing with your husband right, and all exactly. the yard? And, yeah. and there's more to it that's going to shock you. But... Um, so, you know I have to multitask while I'm doing this. I'm listening yeah. to everything that you're I saying. Know. Uh, Running Facebook. You're and fine. <laughs> you're fine. I'm, I'm talented that way. We, we may get attacked. But I probably okay. have a tick on me, too, so. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. We'll pull it out for you. <laughs> Holy smoke. <laughs> Go ahead. But anyway, in 2011, he did get bit by a tick over by our fence line. Oh. Um, and I told him, well, look for the rash, because that's what you hear about. You hear about the rash and flu symptoms. Um, so he never said anything to me and, um, he said he felt a rash. Well, it bit him between the legs. So he did find it eventually, but he, cause it's, they, somebody told me it always goes where they're, where it's warm, like exactly, under your bra and line and, and moist your crotch and they want to hide horrible places so they like, like that. the groin area behind your knees, um, behind your ear, um, your hairline, your scalp, you know, typical, like you, you said, in your, <laughs> I'm starting to. I'm she starting to edge. worry. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, Michaela. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. What's my question? She wants. She wants. You, you want to come her. around here and just check my uh, head okay. for? <laughs> you really want me to? I'm starting to freak out just a little bit. I mean, if you really want me to, I will. to use your uh, pen. No, I don't think there's a tick there. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> Although don't I did pull. Out. I did pull a couple of uh, ticks off the dogs this morning after we came back from the road. The doctors in Bardstown are treating every tick bite. Really? Yeah, they're not playing around with this. Okay, don't let but me interrupt anyway. you. Go ahead and tell me about your son. <laughs> God, this is crazy. I'm feeling like they're crawling all over me. <laughs> so, anyway, um, I was watching him one day, and he was working in the yard with us, and he was having the exact same symptoms as my husband couldn't catch his breath. Felt like the flu. Hardly, yeah. So I, I, I'm a tech consultant by trade, so I got on my computer, which you're not supposed to do. All the doctors say, oh, don't Google don't what you have. Don't look it up, yeah. Sure enough, Lyme kept coming up. So I already had taken him to the doctor several times, and I said, I think this is Lyme. And so they did do checks, but what they found was Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Oh, wow. They gave him seven days of antibiotics. He started to feel better, but once he ran out, he went right downhill again. So when I took him back to the doctor, now this is very typical. I said, I think it's Lyme. I think he still has Lyme. No, he had enough antibiotics. So what's the difference between Lyme disease and Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever? Because I think they get confused. The symptoms are really kind of the same. But you can get a different type of rash. Like with with Lyme disease, you will get what they call an EM rash, which is a spreading rash. And it can look different for each patient. If you if you Google Lyme and pull up rashes and pictures, it's going to show you different rashes. Look, she's going for it. I am. I'm going to look it up, <laughs> see what it looks like. And you'll see different rashes. And then, like Rocky Mountain spotted fever, you'll have spots all over you. Not always, but sometimes so you do. So maybe it looks know. like you have um, measles or something? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Ooh, lovely. A lovely series of pictures. Yeah. There's the bullseye. Yeah. So if you just Google Lyme and hit images, you'll, you'll get all these pictures that I'm getting, too. Now, here's the thing. Less than 50% mm-hmm. of patients get a rash. Oh, really? And it's yes. not always a bullseye rash. Well, the scary part is how little ticks are because I was down at the river last week, but I made the foolish mistake of wearing my flip-flops. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, there we go. And they were, uh, there was this little tiny tick, which mm-hmm. was obviously a deer tick because it was like just a little bit bigger than the size of a pin head. It could have been a larvae or yeah. a, and a so one of the others. It was right in between my toes on the top of my foot, and mm. I saw it, and I just 
grabbed it. I mean, I didn't think twice. I should have put peppermint oil on it or gotten the tweezers out, but I was just like, no way. And I pulled that sucker off. And then when I got home, I washed it with hydrogen peroxide. And I put some antibacterial Good. stuff on it, um, you know, put some bacitracin on it. And thus far, my toes have not fallen off, but they are a little <laughs> bit red. Here, let me just show the expert. <laughs> There's my foot. See between toes three and four? See that red yes. spot? Does that look so like it's it fatal? Did bite you? Is it going to be fatal? It was definitely attached. The thing is, is like patients don't, sometimes they don't show symptoms for several years. Like, Great. Wait till I get to my <laughs> Like I don't have enough problems right now. <laughs> yeah, I had to, I literally was like, I was like scraping my skin. I wanted to get every mm-hmm. tiny little arachnid rat, you know, piece off of my foot. Yeah. So all our <laughs> She's right like, now, yeah, it's, good it's, luck. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it is. It's hard because with each tick bite, it's full of pathogens. Mm. You could get the Rocky Mountain sp- Spotted Fever, the Lyme, Bartonella, which she has Bartonella. Mm-hmm. Uh, she had Babesia, which makes your anxiety go off the roof. So if you start getting a lot of anxiety, you know you have it. And like her, she had depression really bad. Okay, I want to know about this because I suffered a major life-threatening depressive disorder and also extreme anxiety, and now I'm starting to wonder. You might. Could it have been a tick as opposed to everything else I've ever imagined it was because that's the first time I've ever heard anybody say that. Mm-hmm. It's true. Um, yes. It can cause psychological symptoms. Okay, I want to know about this. Tell me what your experience has been, Michaela. My, this, like, with depression and Come everything. a little bit closer. Oh, there you go. With depression? Yeah, and all that? I'd okay. love to know if you don't mind sharing well, that. I've always been, like, with anxiety, <clears throat> I've always been anxious. I wouldn't even at a restaurant, wouldn't order my own food, or I wouldn't talk to the person at the cash register. I'd always have my mom or a friend go up and talk to them. Was it shyness or was it anxiety? It was anxiety. I just thought, I was so nervous that they would be mean to me. And then I'm very sensitive. So if someone's mean to me, I'll cry. Yeah. I'm the same way. Yeah. (laughs) Don't feel bad. (laughs) Don't say anything mean to me. No, it's true. (laughs) Ask anybody who knows me. I get. I have my feelings right here, (laughs) right with the little tick. Okay, but then with the depression, it's just so weird. Your life seems perfect, but Mm -hmm. you're just so sad, and life feels hopeless. Mm -hmm. There was even a time where I locked myself in the bathroom, and normally wouldn't do that, but the bacteria was in my brain, Mm -hmm. so. That was just my reaction. I was just crying, you know, the scream cry, the ugly cry, everything. And I felt like I did that every single day. And my mom's helped me so much with the depression. Sometimes she would have to help me get my pills so I could feel better and be calmer. What have you? What do you take for that? I normally try to use natural supplements, lavender oil or magnesium but those did not help me what helped me the most was taking lorazepam i try not to take that all the time and i also had to be put on prozac and trazodone Mm -hmm. so so typical psychiatric medications which would combat the you're saying bacteria Mm -hmm. that goes into the brain it is a lyme is a bacteria infection okay and it is a spirochete Mm -hmm. it's spiral shaped it's a cousin to syphilis Mm -hmm. So it can do the exact same things that syphilis can do. So it moves throughout your body, mm-hmm. and it, it crosses the blood-brain barrier. So it was in her brain, and she even called the suicide hotline mm-hmm. several times, yes. and they put her on hold. Yeah, the no oh, that's always good. 30 minutes. Was it, are put, you serious? See, and that's the standing joke. Suicide hotline, can you hold, please? Yeah. But that really happened to you. Yes. Yes. Whew. She was very suicidal. I had to call her doctor, and he says, I'll be on call for her. She, she, he said, if it happens again, you call me because mm-hmm. I want this stopped. You know, with the treatment, though, with antibiotics, it is with antibiotics, different antibiotics. Um, they actually use herbs, too. You cannot treat this with just antibiotics alone. There are three forms of this spirochete. And, um, you know, once it enters you and then there's, it, it can go into cis form and it goes into biofilm. <coughs> so, and those are very hard to break open and treat. And even if you're chronic, you still have Lyme. So it's, it, there's no cure for chronic Lyme. 
Okay. And that's what people don't understand. So, uh, yeah, that's what I was curious about because a friend of mine, um, who was probably in her 70s at the time, got very, very sick, and they misdiagnosed her with everything. And then they had oh, an infectious yeah. diseases specialist come in, <clears throat> and they found a little tick on her head, in her hair. So, you know, that's the first thing that he started to look for. Mm -hmm. And then they treated her for Lyme disease, which I, I, and this was 15 years ago. So this guy was very informed. familiar and informed that's and good. he took action and, you know, she's alive today, which is pretty darned amazing. Yes. So you have said, though, that it's very difficult to get a good um, assessment of Lyme disease here why mm -hmm. do you think that is when <laughs> there are so many, you know, vets are concerned about Lyme disease. Vets are talking constantly about frontlining your dog year round, not just in the summer, right. but every single month. Why, why not for we humans? We have had doctors and nurses <clears throat> that have come down with it and come to us, and they said they were never taught about Lyme disease in school. That's they crazy. They hardly ever bring it up. Crazy. There might have been a paragraph. In fact, I had a friend whose son just got through nursing school. He said he would rather have Lyme than have HIV, which, you know, they're both incurable. You know, you can go into remission, but uh, we've been through hell. You do not want Lyme disease. It, you know, we felt like we were going to die. You really, we couldn't even get up. And she was bedridden and she was crying and everything. It, it's so hard unless you sit there and tape somebody to see what they go through with this. You know, we're here now, mm -hmm. but when you go through treatment, you suffer what's called a Herxheimer reaction. And what happens as the bacteria dies, it leaves toxins inside of you. And so your body needs help getting it out or it makes your symptoms worse. Mm. So, so how do you help, how do you get the, the sim, or how do you get the, uh, the toxins out of your body? You what's detox. the process? I what? use Berber, that's a natural herb and forgot the others chlorella. chlorella yeah chlorella that's a really good one it basically eats at the toxins inside of you and i can't think of any others well you take epsom salt baths mm -hmm. um, i was about to mention that too um that helps to detox you and the we see what we call lime literate doctors and they're lime trained, literate <laughs> lime i like literate. that yeah they're trained by ILADS, which stands for international Lyme and Associated Diseases Society. Okay. And they're training our doctors. All right. And it's, it's pretty much free if they have enough funding. Um, they do offer a stipend for doctors. Um, there's online classes for the doctors. And um, there's a, a doctor named Betty Maloney. Mm -hmm. She has a website where they can go and, and um, watch modules for free. And they can get credit for it. So <coughs> I meant to put that website up. That's okay. I have it, but um, I can, can put, we it, can up put it up on Facebook. It's okay. Yeah, I'll put it up later. So um, I want to get to one important question that, that caught my attention when you sent me the first email. And you said your doctors who were trying to deal with your husband's illness were trying to diagnose him with MS or ALS. That was my son, yeah. Oh, your son. Okay. Yeah. So what in the world? I mean, are the symptoms that similar? Okay. Hang on to your seatbelt. Okay, get that <laughs> pink microphone right in front of your mouth because I've got it <laughs> turned up as far as I can. Lyme can cause over 350 diseases. Good Lord. I was diagnosed. It can cause the diseases it or can it can cause, cause it. It causes, causes it or attributes it, attributes to it. Wow. ALS has been found to be 100% Lyme disease. MS, which I was diagnosed with in 2005, it wasn't MS, it was Lyme disease. So now that I've been treated, my MS symptoms are gone. <coughs> um, Alzheimer's patients, 100% Lyme disease. And what they're doing is they're finding these parasitic, parasitic worms inside the brain tissue. And inside these parasites is the bacteria that causes Lyme. And, there was and this you're saying it causes Alzheimer's as well? Alzheimer's, yes. Uh, the you got to admit now, seriously, Vic. You got to admit this is kind of on the edge as it far is. as rational medication and medicine exactly. goes. Exactly. So why is this not being investigated more uh, thoroughly? I'd say by the CDC 
or by, you know, you sent me a list of researchers, which is pretty cool. Lyme bacteria hides inside parasitic worms causing chronic brain diseases. And this is by, I just was about to ask you if this was like Morgellons. Because I've known about Morgellons for years. Yep. <laughs> and I had a friend who, you know, very strongly believed that she had it and went to the dermatologist. And the dermatologist did a ton of scrapings and she didn't find anything. And it was widely believed to be a psychiatric manifestation of no. whatever. It's caused by bacteria, and they've proven that over and <laughs> over again. Now, not everything is Lyme. Like fibromyalgia can be other infections, Excuse but me. what they are telling doctors. Now, doctors can't attend every conference. They can't read every study. Exactly. They're busy. But well, they one, have to be doctors. But at, <laughs> right. At the conference, they're telling them that all these diseases have <clears throat> a cause, a bacterial, inf some sort of infection cause. So what they need to do is find the cause, treat the cause. Don't treat the symptoms. So you're treating some type of infection. And that's what these Lyme literate doctors do. And sometimes they don't know the cause because the testing for Lyme <coughs> is so unreliable. The testing, the two-tiered testing that they use to test to see if you have it was designed for surveillance of the disease only. It mm. was never designed to diagnose patients. But so Lyme Dr. can Stone cause over it. 350 chronic conditions and diseases, which is pretty amazing when you stop to think about it. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break here, and uh, I want to show you guys where you can go tonight. Are you looking for live music? Sure. You like live music? Okay. I'm going to show you where you can go to get live music tonight, and it's actually courtesy of our Morning Jam guys, no. uh, Kevin and Bryce, who are wonderful, uh, from 7 to 9 every single Monday through Friday. Always check out where we're going to have music, and uh, local and regional musicians are all we play on this station. So we're very happy to be able to promote where they're going to be at any time of the day or night. Let's take a look at the WCHQ Concert View for Wednesday, May 17th. All right, folks, let's see what kind of shows we can find for you tonight. How about at a Gerstle's place? You can go and check out Kimmin and Doug. And at Goodwood Brewing, it's Gypsy Jazz. Over at the Levee at the River House, it's Slinky Jenkins. Down at the Stevie Ray's Blues Bar, it's Jenny and the Jets. The Listen Here House Show will feature Blunt Money and Zach Schmidt. Tonight, down at 3rd Street Dive, it's Open Mic with special guest NYC Station. Over at Kaju, it's Joe Reckingball. Over at the Bistro 42, it's the Serenade. Over at the River City Winery, it's Jed Gilliam. And don't forget tonight at 7 o'clock right here on WCHQ 100.9. It's the Homegrown Radio Hour where they will feature the live music of Miss Jenny Carr. This has been your WCHQ Concert View. If you've got a show you'd like to let us know about, go to CrescentHillRadio.com and hit the icon at the top of the screen that says, List, List Your Gig. Thank you. We are back. We have a couple of friends with us, Michaela and Vicki Petsy, and they are extremely, almost to the point of terrifyingly knowledgeable about <laughs> Lyme disease. <laughs> Vicki is the founder and president of the Kentucky Lyme Disease Association, and uh, Michaela is your daughter. Their whole family is affected by Lyme, and, and I'm fascinated to know that what you just told me was that 350-plus diseases are caused by Lyme disease, and it says it's a disease frequently misdiagnosed so everything from abdominal wall weakness to anxiety and arthritis to multiple sclerosis to uh, optic nerve edema which is your eyes which is really terrible to think about to schizophrenia to stroke oh, all I of these things are happening vascular vasculitic neuropathy ventricular uh, asystole, vertigo. That's Look an interesting this. one. So this is stroke. Things. My God, you've got a lot of information yes. here. <laughs> okay. Now, Loretta Lynn should have seen this because she mm -hmm. had a stroke this past week. And, you know, she lives in uh, Hurricane, Hurricane Hollow. Is that what it is? Probably a lot of ticks down there. I was shocked when I found this. I found this just a couple <clears throat> months ago. I didn't know strokes could be caused by Lyme. Hmm. Now, that doesn't mean 
when they have a stroke that it is Lyme, mm -hmm. but it can be a cause of it. Yeah, it says Lyme disease presenting as multiple ischemic strokes. Right. Wow. So um, when you're talking about, okay, let's get this thing out of the way first because this is really important. Obviously, by the looks on your faces, I did not do the right thing when I grabbed that little sucker by it, the back of its neck <laughs> and yanked it out of my toes right. right there on the ground at River Road. So I am aware of the fact that you're supposed to grab a pair of tweezers and gently back the tick out, hopefully before it has attached. But even if it has attached, you should still be able to get it out. And then somebody told me yesterday to drop peppermint oil on it. That is going around, and that is a myth. Oh, it is? Yes, and okay. even the oil companies were trying to get it taken down because... The peppermint oil companies, right, because yeah. like we said, it can cause the tick to regurgitate. If you smother it with anything... Mineral oil, all nothing, those old Vaseline, things. Vaseline. Um, <coughs> never it's burn it. It's going to throw up in your wherever. You never burn it. But you want to use tweezers. Oh, yeah, still? that's the other one. Light a match and oh, touch, right, it, right. touch See, its that's little I'm, butt. That's a back up. Torch to it, yes. Yeah, that doesn't work either, but, huh? No. Just okay. to make it clear, though, you can still use peppermint oil like on yourself. For the, on yourself, right. For the ticks. To, just to, to keep the ticks like, away. Tick yeah. But tick not away. to make the tick yeah. back out. Right. So what do I do next time I get a tick? So just take Carry some tweezers, tweezers around. Yeah. <laughs> Just tweezers, tweezers. But you still want that tick out as quickly as possible. Okay. And so, what is the proper procedure for taking a tick out with a pair of tweezers? You use a pointy. A, they have to be very pointy. Mm -hmm. And you want to get as close to your skin as possible. Okay. And you want to get right by its head. Okay. And you want to avoid the body. Because if you squeeze that body, again, you're pushing those pathogens into the host. And is the head what's buried in your exactly. body? Exactly. Yes. Yes. It's nasty little teeth. Oh, it's ugly. Biting yeah. through your skin. If you ever seen a magnified, they're really ugly. They have like pointy little mouth parts. Oh, I and, know. And they drill into you. Yes, <laughs> I'm aware of that. You're not supposed to twist it when you take it out, right? right? Do not twist, twist the tick. Gently pull it out. Gently pull out the head of the tick. Do not squeeze the body or it will throw up in wherever it's attached. <laughs> And, yeah, everybody's going to be turning this off and going, this is so disgustingly <laughs> gross. <laughs> but you know what? Ticks are a big, a big issue, I think, especially in this part of the country, actually, because, um, you know, I've had I've been around animals all my life because I grew up on uh, what most people would know as, a, as an urban farm. I mean, we lived far enough out that we could have orchards and little horses, but, you know, close enough in that we weren't on we weren't on 200 acres of range. We were in a in a city area, but there were ticks there, too. Yeah. Now, see, some people, they get bit hundreds of times, and they're fine. <clears throat> but it depends on your immune system. Sure. So Okay, a, so this is interesting. I'll just bring another question to you. Go for it. I have an IgG of 7, and it's supposed to be in the 300s. So I literally have no immune system. Oh. However... <clears throat> The doctor says that I am the wellest sick person he's ever seen because I've never really known that I had an IgG of 7 mm -hmm. when I was supposed to have 300s. So, therefore, I really haven't given it a whole lot of thought. I've just gone on with my life. Well, now he wants me to take immunoglobulin replacement therapy. So now I'm starting to wonder, again, if low immune, if depression and anxiety and, mm -hmm. you know, all the other god-awful number of things that are wrong with me could be caused by a tick bite I didn't know about. It can it also be caused by, like, all of this health stuff always ties into eating healthy. <coughs> that can be another thing. Because if you're eating processed food all the time, your immune system's just going to crash. And you add stress to that. <laughs> then that's even worse. Okay, so typically I eat fresh fruit and vegetables, but I just had two cookies from the dog Latifa brought me. Have you ever seen a <coughs> truth about truth about vaccines? They had an immu mm -hmm. immunologist mm -hmm. on. I actually did had you, a, did you listen to I her? I had a chiropractor on the show who was very much opposed to vaccines and it was it was a great interesting discussion. The about this movie. Right. And the immunologist on there said, every time you eat sugar, it takes your immune system down by 
Well, and sugar and for five obviously hours. is a huge attractor of cancer, too. Mm, yes. And exactly. infections. Any infections inside of you. And people feed, with mental illness. Will feed the disease. Yep. Feed the cancer cells. Yep. So you want to... You want to eat like a cancer patient. You want to put your, um, y you want your system more alkaline. So you don't, you want to eat a lot of those vegetables. So somebody so, told so. me you want your throat to be alkaline and your stomach to be acidic because that's how you get, the food goes down in an area that's not going to cause GERD, but then when it gets into the stomach, you want it acidic so it will digest the food. I never heard that. Yeah, I, I think that's actually what that. my doctor told me the last time I was in there, which made sense to me because you don't want to have your throat, you know, acidic, but something's yeah. got to chew up all the food. Mm -hmm. Okay, so back to the ticks. As you can tell, I'm obsessed with them now. Um, and I think I've got one in my throat because I keep check I keep choking. Okay, so early Lyme disease. You get a single Lyme rash with no other symptoms. Mm -hmm. That can be a big thing. So you go on a specific uh, regime of medicine. Tell mm -hmm. me a little bit about that. Usually they'll give like 28 <clears throat> days of doxycycline. Sometimes. A month? Yeah. Wow. Um, and if you have a bullseye rash, that does mean you have Lyme disease okay. and you don't want to waste any time. You want to get that treated. Now, we have sent patients with bullseye rashes and the doctors have refused to treat them. Because? They said Lyme isn't in Kentucky. Well, yes, obviously it is or people wouldn't have it. Yeah. Because <laughs> there, there are people who've been proven to have Lyme. Right. Even if it's badly diagnosed and misdiagnosed, mm -hmm. there are some doctors who get it right. There are some. Yes. Okay, so when your husband and your son and your daughter all came down with Lyme disease, and, and were you before or after that? When did you become aware of your Lyme? Um, with Brian, <clears throat> he, your son, he went to yeah. an infectious okay. disease doctor. Yeah. Um, he was given the standard 30-day protocol of IV antibiotics. Okay. And then they pulled his pick line and said he'll be fine. And four months later, he relapsed. Worse than ever, he knew it was coming back because his eyes just started burning. Hmm. And so he couldn't stand bright light. He stayed in his room, had the, <coughs> had the drapes drawn. He could no longer stand up. Wow. He was getting so weak. And we called the infectious disease doctor, which some of them are good, some of them aren't. But um, they refused to see him again. They said there's nothing wrong with him. There's nothing they could do. Hmm. He had the treatment. Now, that's following IDSA protocol. We need doctors to follow the ILADS protocol. And which tell us what those mean again. ILADS is International Lyme and Associated Diseases Society. Okay. And they, IDSA would be? Infectious Disease Society of America. Okay, so they only suggest three weeks of doxy, but the other one says a month. Right. And sometimes six to eight weeks. And sometimes if you've had symptoms for a long time, <coughs> like for my son who's, who was chronic, he had IV antibiotics for 20 months? Probably, yeah. About 15 Good months. Lord. 15 months. Yeah, some of them have it for several years. And you have That's crazy. You have different antibiotics, like I said, because you have to get the cis form and the biofilm. Um, he also had Bartonella and Babesia. So Which you are? Need, the um, co infections. Yeah. Um, Bartonella is more commonly known as cat scratch fever. Oh, right. I've heard of that. And, but it's more, you know, doctors used to think it was a simple disease, but mm -hmm. they're finding that it's not. Mm -mm. Um, and you don't get it from having a cat scratch you, FYI, right? Right. It, it's even in the dirt. Okay. It's everywhere. Okay. Um, and it can live outside the body for six hours. So hmm. when we feed our animals, now this is going to freak you out. We wear gloves. Um, or <laughs> yeah, wash that's going to freak me out all right. Because cats, <laughs> most cats have Bartonella and <clears throat> they won't have symptoms. Yeah. Dogs? Dogs can have it too. <sighs> okay, so this is really strange because I had a sinus infection a couple of years ago that would not clear up. And they had to give me a pick line with two weeks worth of antibiotics. And then I had um, a vitreous detachment in my eye, which created this very strange thing that floats across my eye now called Casper the Friendly Ghost. Are all these things potentially, you just, look, you're shaking your head like, <laughs> oh my God, how many tick bites has she had? No, you know what I'm looking at you like? Before what? I leave here, I'm going to give you some names of some <laughs> 
Lyme literate doctors. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like because to know. Because this is exactly everything. what they look for. Really? Because like for me, I had, because I'm thinking about all these little weird things. I'm, I was as healthy as a horse. Mm-hmm. And see, I always ate whole foods when I was growing up. Yeah. And so I was fine when I was younger because I was bit when I was four years old. Wow. And then in California, just like you, I was mm-hmm. bit a lot in California. Didn't think anything of it. And we've always had lots of animals and the animals bring them in. Mm-hmm. Um, I had IBS. I had sinus infections. One time I had pneumonia. Um, then I started having like panic attacks. Mm. Um, that was that was a key. And then um, it loves the gallbladder. So I lost my gallbladder but had no idea that it was because of that. So they look at your history. Mm. Because for us, my husband and I and my son, we did not test positive for Lyme, hmm. even using Igenix, which is a better test. So what I find interesting about what you're saying is until this um, major depression that, that hit me in 2013 happened, I was as healthy as a horse. I never had a sick day. Uh, I, you know, like in 15 years of work, I never stayed home one day that wasn't a scheduled off day. And And then when, you know, they say that, um, emotional illness manifests physically and mm-hmm. physical illness manifests emotionally. It does. And suddenly all these things were starting to happen. You know, the vitreous detachment was the first one, you know, and then the panic attacks and, and the major depression that hit. And then, you know, you start thinking about all these other things that could be. So you're hearing your story when we're talking here. I'm hearing, you know, a million different. And some people would go, oh, God, who's the hypochondriac? And see, but I still am the wellest sick person, this doctor. And this is an infectious diseases doctor. Says he's never seen anybody walking around with an IgA this low. And I'm perfectly energetic, too. Because um, we do CDC 57 is a test that they do. And what was yours now? Hers was really low, but we got it up. We use yeah. D3. They give you a bunch of supplements to build up your immune system. I take D3. And... Uh, I don't know what hers was, um, but we were happy. I think it was like 150. It was really high. I mean, and then Brian's is still very low. Mm-hmm. I don't even know what mine is. I'm what do you give someone with Lyme disease besides the obvious doxycycline, Vicki? You, you've got a lot of experience oh, wow. with this, obviously. What are some of the supplements that you recommend for people? Oh, and you're not a doctor, nor yeah, do you play do one on the radio. So <laughs> the only reason that you would want to do this is to have the research. But But I'm just asking her to offer her expertise in, in things that might help. Yeah, don't do this without talking to your doctor first. Don't do anything without talking to your doctor. Because mm-hmm. the first thing that the doctor's going to put you on is D3 because Lyme does take out the D3. Okay. Um, it depletes you of it. Uh, magnesium. Mm-hmm. She's like on four a day. Mm-hmm. I'm on three a day. Mm-hmm. And that also helps with pain. The D3, believe it or not, helps with pain. And so, so there's a the tremendous magnesium. amount of pain involved with Lyme oh, disease? Oh, yes. Very. Like, there are times where if I eat <clears throat> gluten or sugar, I'm on the bathroom floor, and she has to rub my back, and I'll just be on the floor in pain for hours. Amazing. Um, <clears throat> they'll use rifampin to help with the Bartonella. Um, for Babesia, they use an herb. and um, These are very complicated terms. But it for is. all these different disease uh, components, they're going to use different medications. Yeah, and it's hard to remember and them how all. And about, how about like a normal supplement like magnesium, like vitamin D3? Um, are there others that would be helpful in dealing with Lyme disease? What else do we take? Fish oil. Fish oil's good. Fish oil. Yeah, um, I take that in the morning. Lyme can attack your heart. Mm. It can affect any organ. Of course. Um, what else? There's somebody that we take. I take like zinc. 20 pills a day. I can't remember all of them. We zinc take is zinc. Good. Zinc um, is good. That's good for the immune system. Um, probiotics is a must. Even if you're well, take, well, take probiotics. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so I want to know what the Lyme challenge is. Oh. This ought to be fun. You take a Lyme. And the coconut and drink it all up. <laughs> Put the lime yeah. in the coconut. In what am I going to do? <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to do with the Lyme? Get it. Am I going to bite it? Do, yeah, what you do is you take a bite. Oh, God, that's so bitter. <laughs> take a picture. Oh, okay. Take a picture of her. Take a picture. You're going to take a picture of me biting the lime yeah, and making yes. a horrible face? Yes. Is that what you're saying? Mm-hmm. Take, yeah. take Great. Like take, take like three. Just okay. Okay. Take we'll one we'll of your mother, face. for heaven's sake. Oh, yuck. Okay, here <laughs> we go. Take it of okay, so what am I doing? Oh, look you at that face. Look at that face. And then what you do is you say a fact about Lyme disease. So what have you learned? Do I have to bite the lime first? Either way. It's very... Oh! 
Oh, tastes like Brussels sprouts. <laughs> <laughs> This uh, is better than a fact, that I, yeah. a fact that a I have. Fact, oh gosh! Fact that you learned. Fact that I have learned about Lyme disease is that I need to back the ticks out by the head with a pair of very pointy tweezers and try not to squish the body because it will then inject pathogens through vomiting into my skin. There you go. That's I a pretty add good one. Two facts that we haven't said yet. Yeah. Is that Lyme disease is congenital and it is sexually transmitted? Ooh. Yeah, yeah. I actually gave it to the kids. They've had it their whole life. They had ADD. They had. They kept having sinus infections, mm-hmm. and that should have been a clear sign that something was wrong because it suppresses the immune system. How long did it take for you to be diagnosed? You said you were bitten when you were four. So for me, it wasn't until <clears throat> 2012 when we were taking care of Brian and going up and down the stairs because he couldn't walk. He was bedridden, and I was having to push his pick lines. And the stress of it and worried about money because insurance doesn't pay for treatment. Um, But the stress of it just wore me down. It made my Lyme come out. And it's weird because my husband and I got went down at the same time. And we could not cook. We could not go to the store. As many times as we tried, I, I would end up coming back home. And so we had to call a friend to bring us food. So... That's pretty That's, incredible. But we already had a Lyme literate doctor, and he promptly saw us and gave us what we needed, and which he knew we were chronic. And so I went on 300 milligrams of Doxy a day. My husband was on 400, and we did that for four months. And then after that, then we were put down to 200, which is 100 twice a day. I know <clears throat> people who think that they may just have um, chronic fatigue syndrome. Who are exhausted all the time. That's me. That's is my it, worst symptom. And yeah. just exhaustion? Exhaustion. And it's Lyme. Yeah. It can be. It can, can be. be other things, too. Like sure. Like mold can have the same <clears throat> symptoms. Oh, boy. Yeah. And like for her, she was in a school that had mold, and they wouldn't do anything about it. So we had to pull her because it was suppressing her immune system, making her Lyme come out. It also made mono come out. So he finally had to put her on antibiotics because we were trying to treat her naturally Um, and it wasn't sufficient exactly it wasn't enough dealing with the mold and so he said she cannot go back in that school again and it's a brand new school yeah do we have different and don't mention the name of the school do we have different types of ticks down here than we do in any other part of the country or are they all the same well like there's different black-legged ticks like when we were in california that's a different black-legged tick um, deer ticks. W- yeah, exactly. Um, the Lone Star tick is here, and it has been found to have Lyme disease. As many times as the researchers will say, oh, no, it isn't. We have researchers that say, <laughs> even the Army saying, that the Lone Star tick does indeed carry Borrelia. You would think that the Lone Star tick would be in Texas. <laughs> I think it was discovered there, and that's why it was oh, named Lone Star. Oh, okay. Now, I want to know a little bit more about Morgellons from the perspective of someone who's talking about Lyme because this was probably 2002 or 2003 when I encountered this person who believed strongly that they had Morgellons, Mm -hmm. and they were constantly scraping at themselves, scratching Mm -hmm. at themselves, and then they would take those you know, bits and pieces of, of skin and they would refrigerate them and take them to the doctor and try to convince the doctor that it was Morgellons, and, and the doctors, of course, didn't believe them. Right. So you're saying that this is the type of disease that would be associated with Lyme and that could be caused by having Lyme, mm-hmm. but it's actually going into the brain and manifesting on the skin. It can, it can yeah. Huh. When, it, when you turn chronic, that's when it starts going everywhere into your body. How do we validate these claims? What are the what are the areas of the internet that we can go to that would have um the information that would validate most of what we're talking you about? You can go to um ilads.org i l a d s exactly ilads.org and then my website we have all the studies. This is from my website. Okay. These are peer reviewed studies. Okay. And I don't have everything listed yet. But as you saw... You have a lot, though, because I looked at it. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, there's like five pages of strokes on the PubMed. Wow. That's amazing. And that's just some of what I got. And then I did MS, too. Um, here's MS right here. Oh, yeah. Two pages. Well, one page, really. 
with three more. So, so how many people subscribe to the concept of? <coughs> excuse me, that tick in my throat is is getting to me. Um, how many people subscribe to the idea that you guys, you know, who have Lyme disease are potentially going to suffer from the effects of this for the rest of your life? I mean, is that there's, a wide conception about this? Are you yes, thinking you're not going to ever get there's, over it? There's, you don't get over it if you're chronic. <laughs> you can go into remission. Um, there's millions of people. Uh, our lads believe there could be anywhere between 1 and 3 million people a year, new patients that are diagnosed each year. So there's millions of people out there, and it's global. And they used to say, well, it's not in the Antarctica, but penguins have now tested positive for Borrelia. For Lyme. So it's everywhere. Yeah. Borrelia causes Lyme. Good grief. Uh, also, and go ahead, Michaela. Okay. I no. also want to add that you can be reinfected by, um, by a tick because I was talking to someone the other day. They thought you couldn't, but some people don't know that. It's like lightning can strike twice. Yeah. Right. So, okay. You said... What was the name of that stuff that you get at Walgreens or not Walgreens? Walmart. Sawyer, Sawyer permethrin spray. Sawyer permethrin spray. So if you use that, you have a fairly decent chance of not getting a tick. Right. What do you put on your dogs? They have Soresto collars. And during the worst part of the year, which is right now, which is May is Lyme Disease Awareness Month. Um, it's also Mental Health Awareness <laughs> Month. So who knows? Maybe they're all tied in together. Yeah, you can take it out. Okay. Here, I'll let you take it out. Um, but sometimes I'll spray them, too, with a, a natural spray to keep them off. Because my son took them into our woods. We have our woods fence because it's really bad in there. It is so bad in the woods um, that they can literally fall from the trees. We oh, just very got that nice. today. Oh, very nice. Tick-borne diseases awareness. I didn't think we were going to get that. From the Commonwealth of Kentucky. So they still can't deny us because we have that from the governor. So they cannot deny that Lyme is here. Wow, isn't that interesting? But the Soresto collars work for eight months, and they work very well for our dogs. And then I spray Where them down too. Where do you get those? To, um, from your vet, and they also offer a rebate. Oh, Soresto. And they cost about $60, but when you add it all up. 16 or 60? 60. Woo. But when you add it all up, like we used to use Frontline, and it lasts for eight months, it was actually cheaper. And the, then you get a rebate. The Soresto collar lasts for eight months. Mm -hmm. Here we go. I'm going to put this up too, so everybody knows where they can get these. If and many interested. vets are recommending, highly recommending the Soresto collars. Oh, really? But if you're going in the woods, I'd add a little something, a natural spray that a dog can handle. Hmm. I'm going to try one of those. I should. Ride. I'm going to wear one. No, you can't <laughs> wear one because you. A lot of people have done that, but you know what will happen is it's absorbed, the chemicals will be absorbed into your skin. And so, that's not a good thing. No, not for humans. Not for me. Okay, so I'm going to say makes help, help, may help dogs keep ticks off. Yeah. Now, isn't it true, though, that the, um, that the front line actually prevents them from attaching or no? When we used front line, they were still biting our dogs, and we mm. still had to pull them off. They mm. were dead, but... Oh, so it just kills them as they attach it, them. Yes, so it's not a good repel. Can they still thing. throw up into the dogs? <laughs> well, why are you the, laughing, are you, Michaela? You, this whole subject is freaking me out majorly. Here's the thing. Why did I ever book you? <laughs> <laughs> now you'll want us back every month. I want you back every month. This is such an entertaining <laughs> never, conversation about such a horrible subject. You don't hear that. Well, here's day. the thing. On the CDC... It says that the tick has to be attached for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely not true. Mm -hmm. Dr. Bergdorfer, who the, who the bacteria was named after, mm -hmm. said you can get it as soon as the tick bites you. It does not have to stay in you to transmit any infections. <sighs> Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever can be transmitted in 10 minutes. Pawasan virus can be transmitted in 15 minutes. Now, Lyme disease, some patients have had it in two hours and other patients some of them were just bit and it didn't stay on them and they still got it so we want to dispel that myth right there because it gives people a s false sense of security you know they think oh we'll just wait for their parent to come and the parent will take the tick off the child you know you don't want to do that you want that tick off 
Okay, so I'm just I'm just going to float through here. This is an entire sheaf of papers entitled Peer-Reviewed Evidence of Persistence of Lyme Disease, Spirochete, Borrelia burgdorferi, and Tick-Borne Diseases. So every single one of these pages. Over 700 studies oh, prove that chronic Lyme exists. The CDC and the IDSA say chronic Lyme disease does not exist. Okay, so w- why would they say that when you hear about people being diagnosed with it at all times? They think that it's post-Lyme. Once you've had your three weeks of antibiotics, it's post Lyme, and it's just residual hmm. damage left from the bacteria. Hmm. Yeah. So what are some of the things that actually are residual? I mean, if you have Lyme disease and it has not created these 70 other diseases, including having them in your brain and the back of your head and your throat and all the other places that I have them, what could it be? Well, we tell people if they still have symptoms, they still have Lyme. So, so it's not post-Lyme under any circumstances? No. Okay. Give me, give me five of the clearest symptoms that you would have besides that bullseye rash. Okay. Um, typical symptoms that we hear about, especially in the media, are you get a rash, you get flu symptoms, mm-hmm. you have joint pain, mm-hmm. you have fever. Mm-hmm. Okay. Here's the thing. Um, you can get bit and you might have your shoulder, shoulder pain. And you'll think, well, I just slept funny. And then the next day you might have pain in your wrist Hmm. because it moves around the body. And it will come and go. And like I said, it moves around. And then the next month you could have digestive issues. Hmm. Bartonella really creates havoc on on your stomach. And it can cause all kinds of problems. I'm curious about fibromyalgia and whether that's one Hmm. of the misdiagnosed diseases. That's one of the top ones. Oh, is it really? MS and fibromyalgia, huh? Uh Uh-huh, ALS. Now, with ALS, um, sometimes there's so much damage that it's hard. If if it's caught early, sometimes they can reverse it, but there's a lot of damage with ALS. Arthritis, too, right? Arthritis, all the kinds of arthritis, (laughs) yes. Um, All right, I am going to pretty much end it there because we've got to do a couple of little business things here, but I want to thank... Both of you, Vicki and Michaela Petsy, who came on today for the purposes of spreading their extraordinary knowledge of something that is terrible and frightening and disgusting, which is tick-borne Lyme disease. And there's a book that's been written about it by Richard Horowitz called How Can I Get Better? An Action Plan for Treating Resistant Lyme and Chronic Disease. And uh, this guy is a board-certified MD specializing in internal medicine. And he founded the Hudson Valley Healing Arts Center in Hyde Park, New York. He says his, uh, he's treated more than 12,000 patients for tick-borne diseases, and he's one of the pioneers of working with Lyme disease. So it could be an interesting read. It's I think for I'll, doctors. It's I think for I'll, doctors, too. Uh, well, we have been yeah. sending it to doctors. That's good, because mm-hmm. then you become intelligent, and you become <laughs> ILAD, what did you call it? Eyelids. Okay. But, yeah. I mean, did you, you called it some sort of doctor who knows what they're talking oh, about. Oh, L-L- literate. LLMD. L-L- for sure. LLMD. Okay, good. Lime literate. Vicki and Michaela Petsy, thank you so much. Thank you. Babe. Just leave this stack of stuff with me, and I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll read it overnight as I'm searching hey, you my bed. You can have it. I'm searching my bed for ticks. That will be a whole lot of fun. Now, I want to bring up the fact that we have an animal function, which is so unusual for me to be talking about. Puppies and Pints Patio Party, that's alliterative, Sunday from 3 to 5 at The Hub, which is a a wonderful restaurant on Frankfurt Avenue that always features and hosts wonderful fundraisers, and we appreciate them so much for that. Puppies and Pints Patio Party for the Aero Fund. And, you know, that's the cool thing. Tito's Handmade Vodka and Pet Wants on the Avenue, which is uh, down at the bottom of Frankfurt Avenue, right past the North End Cafe. So these are these are wonderful opportunities to come and find out more about how to help the Aero Fund. And um, I think it's also an opportunity to get together and and uh, socialize with other people who love animals as much as I do. And that's probably one of the the most challenging things in the entire world to find animals uh, to find people who love animals as much as I do. But I do, and I I love the fact that Latifa was in with us this afternoon. Had a great time with her. Uh, love the fact that I, I got to be completely grossed out and sickened by the story about ticks, but I learned so much about them, and I know now how to remove a tick appropriately, which is with a sharp pair of tweezers, 
trying to get as close to the skin as possible and trying to get a hold of the head instead of the body and not squeeze the body because if you do that, <laughs> then you will squeeze all of the stuff out of the tick and it will throw up into your body. We do not want that to happen. Am I right, ladies? Right. I thought that I was right. That's perfect. So I will be, uh, I will be watching very carefully to make sure that these things do not happen to me, and I will pass along all the information that I find from reading this stack of information. I want to thank you all for joining me. And at 7 o'clock, I'm going to run home and feed the puppies right now. 7 o'clock, we are going to have a great show with Jenny Carr. She's going to be here with us for the Homegrown Radio Hour. And just for fun, because I love the music so much just going to play the bed for the homegrown radio hour and then i'm going to like i'm going to introduce it like i never said that just now hey ladies and gentlemen so glad that you're with us this afternoon and just in a couple of hours you're going to have the opportunity to enjoy more great music as a matter of fact it's one minute till six and at 7 p.m jenny carr will be here to be my guest on the homegrown radio hour and looking so forward to hearing her sing Really appreciate y'all staying with us this afternoon. Take it from Tara. Take it from Tara. Take it from Tara. You're listening to WCHQ LP. Louisville, Kentucky, 100.9 FM, Crescent Hill Radio, all local music all the time. You're listening to WCHQ LP, Louisville, Kentucky, 100.9 FM, Crescent Hill Radio, all